Hi everybody, welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel and welcome to the Crumbs and Doilies kitchen here in London. It is my all time favourite place to be because we are constantly surrounded by delicious things like cake and cookies and especially now we have relaunched the cookie dough cake that Rosie has just beautifully finished off here. Um, it's an original old school Crumbs and Doilies cake. I love cookie dough, I know that you love cookie dough so I thought we'd better show you guys how to bake this yourself so let's get started. All right, so before we get baking anything, we're gonna need to make some cookie dough, obviously, because we wanna freeze this, because we're gonna be baking it in the sponge, so we want it to be frozen. Now, a few weeks ago, I showed you guys how to make cookie dough and all sorts of different kind of flavor combinations that you can do, but I'll just whiz right through the recipe just so you've got it right here. So you wanna start with 480 grams of really soft, unsalted butter, and then to that, you're gonna add 180 grams of soft, light brown sugar and 280 grams of caster sugar, and then to that you're going to add 420 grams of flour which remember you want to bake and then we're going to go with two teaspoons of salt eight tablespoons of plain yogurt or buttermilk or sour cream something kind of plain and tangy and then we've got two teaspoons of vanilla extract and I'm going to chuck in 100 grams of chocolate chips so just mix all of that together and then you're going to spread it out so that you've got a nice layer of it so you can get some good old cookie dough chunks and once it's frozen you'll end up with this I mean, right now it just looks like a little bit of greaseproof paper, but inside is the cookie dough magic, and it's really, really hard, which means that when we bake it into our sponge, it's gonna stay in these lovely little chunks. So let's crack on with our sponge. We're gonna start with our sugar. So for this, we're gonna go for a combination of caster sugar and brown sugar, because obviously cookie dough is all about that brown sugar. So you wanna pull out some of that kind of caramelliness. So I've got 400 grams of caster sugar and 100 of dark brown sugar but if you've only got soft brown sugar I would go with that and then we've got butter so you're gonna need 340 grams of butter and if you want to go with regular plain old unsalted butter then you know fine go for it but you think you should burn it like this because burnt butter is the best thing in the world and it just adds so much more flavor to your cakes so for this, if you're gonna burn it, it's really, really simple. You're gonna start with 400 grams of butter because remember, when you burn it, it's gonna evaporate off some of the liquid, some of the water, and it will end up a lot lighter. So 400 grams of butter into a saucepan, get it simmering, boiling away, keep on stirring it so it doesn't get caught on the bottom. And once it's turned a gorgeous amber color, you're gonna pour it into a bowl, heat proof, remember, <laughs> and then you wanna let it set to the same consistency as your soft, butter so you might need to put it into the fridge but just keep kind of stirring it so that it sets evenly and you'll end up with this I mean it looks amazing right and oh it smells incredible so we've got 340 grams here and we're gonna chuck that in with our sugar and then lastly to this a little bit different because we've got the brown butter um, and the brown sugar, sometimes these things can tend to dry our sponges out. So we're gonna add in a little bit of oil. So I've got vegetable oil here, or you could use sunflower oil, something flavorless. I wouldn't go with olive oil, even though it's delicious. It might be a bit weird in the sponge. So I'm gonna put in 100 grams of vegetable oil here. And as usual, we're gonna turn our mixer onto a medium speed and we're gonna get this whipping for about five minutes until it's really thick, pale and fluffy. Okay, so because we've got the brown butter and the brown sugar, your batter at this stage is gonna have these kind of flecks in it. So don't worry, that is what it's supposed to look like. I think it looks amazing. This is my favorite. Did you know what? This is the worst thing about working at a bakery is that you can't lick the bowl and try stuff. It's torture. <laughs> anyway, next up it's time to add some eggs. So we're gonna add eight eggs in total and I'm gonna add them two at a time. We're gonna keep our mixer running, but we'll just drop it down to a low speed as we add each pair of eggs <laughs> and we'll whip them up really well in between so that we keep incorporating loads of air into our batter. And once your eggs are whipped through, we are looking glossy and 
gorgeous. It is time to add some flour. So we've got 500 grams of self-raising flour. And I know a lot of you can't find self-raising flour where you are, in which case you can use plain flour and some baking powder. And we've done uh, a recipe for this on the channel. So I'll make sure that there's a little link to that in the description box below. So you can make this cake no matter where you are. <laughs> no excuses. So I'm just putting this through a sieve just to get rid of any lumps. And now we're gonna put it back on the mixer, but now we're just gonna put it on the lowest speed. So we're just kind of folding it through because what we don't wanna do is whip out all that air that we just spent ages kind of creating. So onto the lowest speed, just mix until combined. And as soon as the flour has combined, I'm gonna pour in six tablespoons of whole milk. And then once that's combined, it's chocolate chip time. So I've got 100 grams of chocolate chips, and as you can see, I've actually chopped them up a little bit further. You could just use a chocolate bar for this and chop it up. I've gone for a 54% chocolate, because I love dark chocolate, but if you want to go for milk or white, you could do this with white. If you wanted to, then go with that. So we're just going to, again, pour these in, keep the mixture on low, and just let it all kind of spread through the batter. And that is our batter made. So it is time to get it into our tin. So I'm making an eight inch cake here. I'm gonna give you a recipe for a six inch as well. So make sure you check out the description box for all the quantities before you get baking. I'm just gonna give it a little once round just to make sure we've got it all. And I'm gonna grab my tins. So we're going for four layers. Every cake should have at least four layers, I think. <laughs> now, normally we would just spray these um, with the non-stick spray, but for this cake, I'm actually gonna put a little bit of greaseproof paper in the bottom of each one, and that is because we're gonna be putting some cookie dough into this, and sometimes they can sink to the bottom and stick to the tin, especially if you haven't got a loose bottom tin like this, it can be quite hard to get out. So, I recommend you do that. So let's get these sprayed and lined. And now we just want to evenly distribute our batter between our four tins. By all means, weigh it, but I'm just going to wing it and do it by eye. And before we bake, I'm just going to level them out with a little offset palette knife, but you can just use the back of a spoon or your spatula. They don't need to be perfectly smooth, but it just kind of helps. Now, obviously, it is time for the cookie dough. So grab your slab of cookie dough. Try to resist, not just chomping into it. I won't tell if you do. <laughs> and we're going to cut up some little chunks, kind of about a centimeter square. and we're gonna push these into the sponge. And it is time to bake. So the oven is preheated to 170 degrees C, which is fan assisted. And they're gonna go in for somewhere around 22 to 25 minutes, I reckon. I think you guys should put them in for 22 minutes and then grab your skewer or your sharp knife, poke it in the middle of every single tin, because remember, they might not be even in size. And then if your skewer comes out clean, your cakes are baked. If there's a little bit of goo in them, then make sure you put them back in for a minute or two until they do come out clean. Let's go. <laughs> and whilst our cake is baking in the oven we can get on with making our icing so for this we're just going to go kind of classic we're going to stick with a vanilla buttercream so we're going to start with some soft butter and I've got 500 grams here. Now remember, I am making a large cake, so there is a smaller quantity in the description box below. But if you've made too much, just grab yourself a spoon and have a jolly good time. So <laughs> let's get this on our mixer and we're gonna start by beating this up 
for around five minutes and you'll see what kind of happens to the butter. It's going to go really kind of pale in colour and it's going to be very kind of thick, very fluffy and very delicious. So let's just have a little look. Can you see how different this butter looks? And it's only been in there for a few minutes. And if you have got a stand mixer, it really <laughs> is very helpful for this. But you can do this with an electric hand whisk and you can probably do it by hand. It's just gonna take you a little bit of time, but it's all worth it. So now we can start adding some icing sugar. So I've got 740 grams of icing sugar here, which I've already sifted. And I'm gonna start by putting in half with the butter. And then we're gonna put the mixer on to a low speed. And then once it's combined, we're gonna turn the mixer up to a nice high speed and keep it whipping for another four or five minutes. And then we're going to add our second half of icing sugar and also I'm going to add a little bit of salt to this. I've got about half a teaspoon of salt here because with this cookie dough I don't want it to be too too sweet and the salt just kind of like pulls out the flavour because we're going to be adding some vanilla to this as well. So I do recommend the salt. If you've gone with salted butter then you're probably alright but you can always taste it and see what you think. So let's do the same. Mix it on a slow speed, whip it up high for another few minutes. So let's add that vanilla and I'm going to go for about half a teaspoon, let's pour it right on in there and this is like super delicious, amazing vanilla and you can get this from cupcakegemma.com if you want to grab yourself some, it is delicious. And then we're going to get the consistency of our buttercream right with some milk. So I've got some whole milk here and I'm just going to add it about two tablespoons first, we'll let it whip through and then we'll test the consistency. And to test the consistency, I'm just going to grab my spatula and I'm going to get in my bowl and just have a little scrape around and I'm going to imagine what it feels like to ice a cake, which if this is the first time you've iced a cake, you probably have got no idea what I'm talking about, but we want it to be spreadable and soft, but not too firm that it's going to pull away our crumbs and also not so soft that it's going to like just drip off and be ooey gooey runny. If anything, leave it a little bit too thick because we can always add a little bit more milk later on. So I'm happy with mine. I'm going to cover this up, wait for our amazing smelling sponges to cool down and then we'll get decorating our cookie dough cake. And when your cakes have finally cooled down, we can get trimming and leveling our sponges. So I'm going to start by cutting off the outside of this cake just to get rid of some of this caramelization. You do not have to do this, but if you want to do it and just be left with a real fluffy cake inside, then you can grab a set of cake cutters um, from cupcakegemma.com. So I'm going to be trimming this down to an, a seven inch. And I'm just going to chomp it out like a giant cookie. And that means we can just take off this bit here and don't worry, you can definitely eat this. You could spread some icing on it, or you could even make it into cake pops, cake truffles, whatever you want to call them. We have done a recipe for those, um, so I'll put a link to that. I've got so many links to send you guys, but they're all worth it. Right, so once we've chopped out the kind of ring, we're going to level it off using our cake leveler, and we're going to very slowly and very carefully slice the very top skin off the cake. And again, take that bit off and we're just left with this lovely, moist, delicious looking sponge. So I'm going to do that to my other three layers. Now it is my favourite part and that is to fill and crumb coat our cake. So I've got my vanilla buttercream here and again if you have made this in advance and it's stiffened just loosen it with a bit more milk and before we use it we're just going to give it a good beat because it is super fluffy and airy 
but we do want to make it nice and smooth so giving it a bit of a stir just gets rid of some of those air bubbles and we're going to grab our offset palette knife this is my favorite tool in the kitchen <laughs> they're really really handy i'm going to take a little bit of buttercream and just spread it on my cake board here and that's just going to stick down our first layer so gently pick up your sponge pop it in the middle and give it a little pat down and then a nice big old blob of buttercream <laughs> and then we just want to spread this around if you've got a turntable then yippee because <laughs> it makes things a whole lot easier because you can just kind of turn it and see what you're doing all the way around the cake and now we're going to fill it so i'm going to start with some chocolate chips again i've chopped them up and you can use whatever kind of chocolate you like i'm going to pop these in and they're going to be nice and kind of crunchy giving some texture to our cake and I'm going to grab back my cookie dough chop it up into little pieces this time because the more the merrier <laughs> and we're going to dot those around the cake as well and then we're just going to keep on going going sponge, icing, chocolate chips cookie dough chunks and just give it a really good squish down so that it sticks properly and do spend a little bit of time just kind of lining it up because it's easier to make it straight now than it is once it's all completely iced And then for our top layer, we're going to, as usual, turn it upside down because this is going to be so much easier to ice. Less crumbs to kind of pull away. And again, just line it all up now. And oh, look at this. Look at all these bits of cookie dough that are baked in the sponge. Oh, I love it. I can't wait. Right, let's get this crumb coated nice and quickly. So I'm actually going to swap to my straight large palette knife for this. And I'm going to grab some more buttercream and we're going to put a nice big covering all the way around and if you get kind of crummy icing grab yourself a separate bowl and put it in there because we don't want to have crumbs going into our top coat once you've covered the sides you can move them to the top don't worry about getting it nice and smooth just yet. Just make sure you've covered every little bit of sponge. And then we're going to grab our cake smoother. Just this simple little bit of plastic, but super useful. And we're going to hold it nice and flat against the side of the cake. Turn the turntable and we're just going to smooth out the edges. And to smooth out the top, we're going to take our smoother and keep it pretty flat and we're going to cut in these edges and that's how you get these really super sharp bits like that. And I've got myself a little bit of kitchen paper here so that I can wipe off any excess icing so it doesn't go back on the cake. And we're just going to keep going around until we've got it as smooth as we can. Lovely. So now I'm just going to clean up my board. Pet hate of mine is a messy cake board. <laughs> and then this is going to go into the fridge for around 30 minutes. Uh, we just want to firm this layer up so that it's much easier for us to get a really lovely, smooth, crumbless top coat. So I'll see you in 30 minutes. It's actually over here. I went the wrong way. It is now time to top coat. So you can see, I can touch this cake and not get icing all over my fingers. It's nice and firm, so it's gonna be much easier for us to do this. So again, give your buttercream a nice little whip so it's lovely and smooth. I'm gonna blob it on top, grab my big palette knife, 
and just kind of start spreading it all over the cake. And it's always best to put more on and then you can scrape it off rather than trying to put a little bit of buttercream on at a time. And once you've got it on, again, we're going to grab our smoother and we're just going to make this as smooth as we can. So very lightly brushing the side of our cake. Alright, so for decoration, I'm going to start with some chocolate chips. I'm going to grab a handful like this and I'm going to lightly press them into the bottom of our cake. Now we need to make some ganache. So if you know how to make ganache and you usually make it in the microwave, then go ahead and do that. But I'm going to show you guys how to make it on the hob because I know a lot of you don't have a microwave. I don't have a microwave, so this is how I do it at home. So in my little saucepan here, I've got some double cream and we want equal quantities of cream to chocolate. And now we're gonna very gently warm this cream through. We don't wanna kinda let it boil because it will kinda cook it and it will go a little bit gross. <laughs> we just wanna get it nice and warm. And in the meantime, you can get on with chopping up some chocolate. So I've got the same amount of chocolate here and this is a 50% chocolate. And I've chopped it up really, really small because that's just going to help it melt a lot easier. So we just need to wait for this cream to warm up. And once it's warm, we're going to take it off the heat and pour it straight over our chocolate. And then you're going to leave it for about 30 seconds. And don't stir it, just let it sit there soaking in the cream. And once it's sat for half a minute, then we can stir it. So grab your spatula and just start stirring and you can see how the chocolate has melted and now we just need to keep on stirring so that the cream and the chocolate combine. I'm going to do this as carefully as I can. I'm going to put all my ganache into this bottle but you can use a piping bag, no problem. Wow, that went a lot smoother than <laughs> I expected. <laughs> Okie doke, let's get dripping. So I'm going to do like a crisscross rather than a completely filled in drip like we normally would. Once you've gone one way, we're going to go the other way. pretty cool right so now we're gonna put some little blobbies of icing on top but we want to let this set first because if we try and pipe right on top of this it's just gonna smush everywhere so just give me a couple of minutes to set this in the fridge and we'll put our final decoration on top And I've put the rest of our buttercream into this piping bag with a regular star nozzle on the end here. But you could pretty much put any nozzle on because this is going to look really pretty. And we're just going to do a few little wiggles. I say a few. I think I'm going to go for quite a lot. And of course, on top of each of these, we're gonna put a chunk of cookie dough. Cute. 
sweetest cake in the world? I think so. Most delicious cake in the world? I absolutely think so. I know that you can't eat this and confirm it, but I'm gonna confirm it for myself and for all of you by getting myself a massive slice. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I, I admit my plate's too small. Sam just warned me and I was like, no, be fine. <laughs> but look, it is absolutely packed with cookie dough. I want to get a little bit of that baked cookie dough from the bottom there. Ready? Mmm! Mmm! It's so good because the kind of tanginess from the cookie dough, from putting the um, yogurt, it really, really pulls through so you haven't got just kind of sweetness and the saltiness in the icing as well. Oh, it is so, so delicious. And the brown butter just really brings that extra flavour again. Removing a little bit of the sweetness, so if super sweet stuff isn't your thing, then I highly recommend this cake with the burnt butter in it and the brown sugar. I always do this. I always take another mouthful. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Have a look at the beautiful cake. Delicious, my absolute favorite. And I know you're probably thinking that I say it all the time, but maybe, maybe it's true. Maybe every time I bake something, I think it's my favorite thing, but cookie dough is the best. We've got so many cookie dough recipes up on the channel. We've got the cookie dough brownie. We've got a peanut butter cookie dough brownie, I think as well, if peanut butter is your thing. We've obviously got the cookie dough recipe that I gave you a few weeks back. We've got the cookie dough cupcake, all sorts of recipes for you guys. So do check them out and also, Check, check out our cake playlist as well if you want to see some more of our Crumbs and Doilies style cakes. Also, if you want to get any of the equipment that I used in the video today, we've got everything you need over on cupcakegemma.com from the cake tins to the trimming ring things to the levelers to the palette knives, absolutely everything you need to be baking cakes like a pro. So if you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up because it helps spread the word across the YouTube network and we love seeing you guys baking with us and make sure you keep tagging us over on Instagram. We love seeing your photos, they're incredible. We are blown away every time you guys post us a photo. So you can use hashtag Cupcake Gemma and hashtag Crumbs and Doilies um, so we can keep seeing and sharing all your beautiful work. So we'll see you next week. Can't wait to be baking with you guys again. But for now, I'm just gonna eat and eat and eat and eat and eat. Mm. Mm -mm -mm.